It's Monday, December 15th, 2014. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights tonight. Strong artificial intelligence and why it's probably going to destroy us. Let's do this. And why, if you have a better idea for a Monday show, you should email us, geeknights at frontrowcrew.com, or post in our forum. If you're, I posted an idea and we haven't used it, it's because your idea was bad. Or we just forgot, so post it again. But or, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how hard it is to come up with a valid idea. Well, I feel like really what we need to do is when people like suggest an idea... We should tell them why we can't do it, like Kineticon Feedback panel. We should do the show about it to show them why. Oh. <laughs> like... Well, I think it comes down to some of these topics. Like, we I don't want to make a bad show, though. We've technically already talked about them, like in enough depth to where that should be fine. In like guess, a news or something. Yeah, once. people don't search, or they're things that would require research, which we don't got time for that shit. If we're gonna do research and do like a for real thing about something we don't know, that's a lot just about, us reading internet and then saying what we saw on the internet. And you also, you can just read the internet yourself. Yeah, that's not gonna be geek nights. That would be like a YouTube video, like how to set up NTP with Rim. How to read the Wikipedia page on this topic out loud. Yep. Or possibly <laughs> synthesizing the Wikipedia with one or two technical documents. <laughs> Whoa. Or it's a topic that we just think is. Stupid or boring, and we don't have a lot to say. Yeah, there's like nothing to say about it, or it doesn't fit, or et cetera, et cetera. I feel like we could do a lot more Monday shows if we started focusing more on. Also, a lot of the people things people suggest are overly broad and not nearly specific enough. And we could or, do those broad shows, but or uh, they're so specific that there isn't 30 minutes of stuff to say about them. Exactly. In which case, we should just do a tech news roundup. Yeah. Yep. Actually, we should do that more often. We could I, we could do the show every week just looking at whatever's on the front page of Slash. But then why even make this show? Because there are a hundred podcasts that do that. Yeah, and the the awesome thing is, like, I've tried to listen to a lot of those They're podcasts. They're all bad. Those people don't know shit, and those podcasts are really bad. Mm -hmm. We could do it better, but eh. Yeah. That's like being better at a sport that you're good at but you don't like. <laughs> like making really boring and simple analogies and similes <laughs> that... Do exactly like they're so they're so functional and pragmatic. That What's your news? Yeah. So in the news, I got two things. I got some science and I got some technology being misunderstood and used inappropriately by people who should know better. Okay. So in science news, uh, evolution is winning our war on HIV and AIDS for us. That's good. So something awesome is happening. Well, how? But I mean. HIV itself has the same evolution powers that we do. In fact, it should be even faster at evolution than people. Uh, it is. And this is the So here's so what's happening. So shouldn't it be winning against us? Ah, so here's what's happening. You know what it is? It, to win, it's winning the battles, thereby losing the war. Mm. So what is happening? And I'll link to a Slash article that links to an abstract from Oxford and an article explaining this in more detail. And I apologize to any of our uh, virologist friends, both of you, who are going to yell at me for getting this wrong. You're going to be so wrong. Oh I'm my glad God. this is my news. So I'm going to try to say this without saying anything that they can actually call me out on for. Well, you're an expert at that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so HIV, the virus that causes AIDS... Mm -hmm is becoming less virulent in the sense what that... What does virulent even mean? So it replicates more slowly. Okay. Because in order... Basically, some people are more resistant to AIDS. Obviously. If they get HIV, they get AIDS, you know, the syndrome that's caused by the eventually depleted immune system, depleted by HIV, later. Those people are more effectively treatable by drugs. So in order to replicate better among those people, it replicates slower to avoid triggering the immune responses when the immune system's particularly strong. Mm -hmm. When it replicates slower, it's more effectively able to be treated, and this is becoming something that we, have able, we are now able to measure. AIDS replicates 10% lower in Botswana than it does in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the virus is literally evolving in the places where we can't treat it that effectively to replicate slower and effectively be more treatable because of the selection pressures of the people who are able to spread it and the demographics of those regions and all these things. 
So, quote, Golder added that the average time from infection to the onset of AIDS has increased 25% over the past decade. All right. So if this evolutionary trend in HIV continues, HIV is rapidly becoming a disease that is not that dangerous. Well, won't the HIV, uh, you know, if it starts losing by going slow, won't it start going faster? And well, you know, some HIV mutation will make it go, you know, and well, that, going one will, faster, that, one, that one will catch on all over the place. See, it's, it's tricky because if you go too fast as a virus like this and you kill your host, you're not spreading anymore. And if you go super slow and spread more widely but do less damage, you might spread more widely, but people are less worried about it. So, so you just wait until everyone in the world has the AIDS and then you go fast. Yeah, that's my strategy when I play Pandemic as a virus. <laughs> <laughs> so this article is Madagascar. fascinating. Read the actual <laughs> article because it describes this in much better detail than I ever could. But the gist of it is evolution is happening in HIV and it's actually working out. It's like the one time when the thing that's happening that's demonstrable by science is actually the thing we kind of want. Like, the good answer happens. Mm. Not like with space. Like, oh, yeah, you'll never get to any other stars. Fuck you. Speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> like, this this time the answer actually fell our way. Like, everything's coming up Millhouse. Sure. So, in other news, Flickr is a platform that allows you to share your photos. And it is actually, still in my opinion, the best platform in the world to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's... The oldest. You mean you might not prefer the interface, but it's a good Name interface. Name a better one. What are you going to use? Fucking Picasa. Yeah, well, Picasa's so, bullshit. Facebook, right? Yeah. I mean, well, there's there's some fancy ones like 500 px and shit like that. Yeah. However, Flickr costs a, a reasonable lot of money. Right. The amount of mo- that's the biggest thing Flickr has going for it, and the reason I've used it forever is because for a flat annual fee that is incredibly low, is like 25 a year or something shit like that. It's so cheap. You get. A hundred percent absolutely unlimited space. Now, there are other services that can give you unlimited space for a reasonable amount of money, but uh, those services do not have the photo abilities of Flickr, which pretty much takes care of absolutely all of your photo needs ever. Yep. It's also one of the few things Yahoo has that's actually good, so they're not going to let it well, die. Well, they bought it. They didn't yeah. make it. No, but it's <laughs> like, of everything that Yahoo Yahoo's owns... Yahoo Sports and Weather are good. Yeah. I, I was about to say Yahoo Sports, mm-hmm. Yahoo Weather, and like it's the Yahoo Online Games. Sure. That plus Flickr, it's all Yahoo's got going for them. <laughs> so Flickr has an option where you can pick the license for your thing. Like Flickr well, was that's always. A, every photo sharing site needs to have that. Yeah, but Flickr like does a really good job about it. And, they, like, they were one of the first places to offer uh, that feature. Yeah, like they Creative offered that Commons pretty much from the beginning. They and even better, they give you every useful option. So I can choose all rights reserved, non commercial, no derivatives, non contribution, share alike, non commercial, no derivatives, share alike, or just attribution, which is what I use because I don't care. Use my do whatever the fuck you want with my pictures. I don't yeah, think my pictures is going to make me any money. Yeah. So if and, you can and, make I, money from them, well, uh, that means I'll get noticed and then I'll make money from the next one. And um, if I don't get noticed, I wasn't going to make money anyway. So again, I'd no you know. You know how many again. photos there are in the world? That one individual photo is worth nothing. And you know what? If I took a really good photo of a bridge and some magazine uses that instead of paying a guy who took a all like slightly better photo sucks for slightly better photo guy but good enough photo works fine (laughs) (laughs) magazine didn't sell extra copies because your photo yep so basically what's happening is there's a bunch of sensationalist articles going around about how Flickr is selling your Creative Commons photos for profit and not giving any of that to you, and that's this reminds bullshit. Me, this reminds me of the story back in the day. Yeah. Like, some guy in the UK was putting Firefox on a CD and selling it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like... It's Dude, like, I knew a guy at RIT who sold people CDs with, like, Nessus or whatever on it, nah. and, and and that's all totally okay. It's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to buy Ubuntu. I got some Ubuntu CDs here. Ubuntu CDs. $10. In fact, $10. In fact, if anyone would like to buy from me a really modern Linux operating system, I will happily sell it to you for like under $10,000. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> In fact, it'll be compatible with Red Hat. Sure. <laughs> so basically, morons are mad because they tag, they actively tag their Flickr photos as being attribution only. Right, well, I mean, the default is all rights reserved. Meaning so if you're you set to attribution only, that means you specifically 
and consciously made a decision or accidentally clicked a not easy to click box to specifically say, I want everyone on the internet to be able to use these photos for anything that they want ever. Just give me credit. Yep. So other people, because it, there is a non-commercial option. You can trivially say, anyone's allowed to use my photo unless they use it commercially. But these people didn't do that. What Flickr is doing is anything on Flickr that's flagged as being usable commercially under a Creative Commons license you can just buy prints and they just take the money and they send right. the person a print with so an someone, attribution sticker and attribution stuff. So someone else can go to my Flickr account, see one of my photos, give Flickr money. Flickr will print my photo and send it to them and not give me any money and give me the credit, which is all I asked for. Do you know how awesome that is? That's actually pretty cool. You could buy prints of your own photos without having to print them out. Yeah, or like... And they're probably going to be way high quality. If my mom wants a print of something, she can just do it on her own. She doesn't even need to talk to me. Yep. So literally everyone who is mad about this is, one, using technology improperly, two, actively made a poor decision, and three, misunderstands the ramifications of that active poor decision. Mm Mm-hmm. Once you, you, if you don't know what you're clicking on, either don't click on it or read the documentation or click on it and accept the consequences of what you clicked on. Yeah. (laughs) You can't complain about, it may be one thing if the default was attribution only. Yeah. But it's not. So shut up. And these people are really mad. And there's all this vitriol going around about how Flickr's selling my photos without permission. Like, no, Flickr's selling them with your express permission. Explicit, (laughs) express written consent. You gave it. It's To use a real world analogy, this would be like if I took a table, like an old table, and I put it... Like the one in my parents' basement? And this is a real story. I did this. We Mm -hmm. had, yeah, we had an old table, the the previous table, the other table Uh. at RIT. And we had to get rid of it. So we put it outside our apartment and we put a sign on it. That gave, you know, said, you know, like, this is our apartment, like, come inside. Either take it for free, or if you want, come give us, like, 20 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Later in the day, I went out, and it was gone. If I then complained that someone exercised option one, (laughs) as opposed to option two, I'm a moron. Yes, you are. (laughs) So yeah, uh, that's that's my news. I I just really got to get ahead of this. If people the people who are mad about this are dumb, and if you're mad about it, you're dumb. Yeah. All right. Another news tomorrow. A news is gonna happen. Uh oh. For the eighth time, T-Mobile is gonna have some uncarrier conference thingy, which is pretty much like the Apple keynote of T-Mobile, Ooh. where they do it every quarter, and they come out and they talk about how. They're so much better than all the other carriers. Look at all the good stuff that we're going to do. Yeah, they're better until you get more than 10 miles outside of any major metropolitan right. area. So here's the thing. It's like, T-Mobile, I want to use you as my carrier. I do in use so you. Many, in so many ways, you are correct. You are definitely you know, taking the path that I would take if I was a phone wireless provider in the United States. Do the things the other people aren't doing. No bullshit contracts. Right? No locking uh, people. Global in. free international roaming, which I use like monthly right yeah all these kind of awesome things right here are the problems you got t-mobile here are the problems the reason i'm still using verizon all right i'm really curious what these are so evil because it's not like you ever fucking leave the city no but that yeah well i mean verizon i can go around the world too it's not a problem uh you don't get free roaming you don't get data roaming for free it's shitty 2g roaming it's Uh, i'm still gonna pay to get 4g's when i go to some other country i can pay like 10 bucks and get like a gig of 4g in those countries that's fine i can pay 10 bucks and buy a sim card in those other countries yeah and then you have to go activate it and all that bullshit as opposed to it starts working when you land that's all right anyway uh here are the problems with T-Mobile. Number one, you're not actually any goddamn cheaper. Not I, at all. In fact, sometimes more expensive. I pay s- I, with with all taxes and fees combined for my effectively like unlimited data whatever plan, mm-hmm. unlimited everything, $74 a month after taxes and fees. That's right. And here's the thing. I pay like 100 So wait a minute. That's not right. It is cheaper. It's not because you don't have any subsidized phones. Uh, yeah, so you got to pay full price for the phone. I buy unlocked phones unsubsidized anyway. And how much do they cost? Uh, well, I paid, I think, like 200 bucks for this Nexus 4. Oh, for a crapo phone. Next, yeah. If you get an iPhone, how much would you have to pay? Uh, list, so 750 740 Yeah, some re- if you take the 750 plus the T-Mobile lower cost compared to, like, my 300 and the they, increased You know what, actually, I, rem- I calculated over this. Over the two years... 
it actually works out so that it's about even. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I did that calculation. It's about the same. It's about the same. So, if I'm paying about the same, then why would I go somewhere that has, even though I agree with many of your policies, you're just slower and just less reliable? Uh, I wouldn't say it's slower. The 4G is fucking wicked fast. Uh, yeah, but have you used a Verizon with LTE? Yeah, I've seen it. It's like, it's not... It's, How? it is night in the day. Scott. I've used the T-Mobile at work. It is not so good. I was in Istanbul and Germany and London, all like all in the span of a few days, landing in all those countries along the way. There's no easy way to have gotten data in all those places without spending a lot of time at multiple airports or paying a ton Walk of money. Walk into a drugstore, grab a SIM card, pop it in. Uh... Yeah, if you go type some numbers Scott, in. Uh, how often have you traveled? Try that and see how quickly it all works. Also, if you do that in Istanbul, that SIM card gets blocked about two hours after you activate it. Why? Because of the laws, you're not allowed to use foreign phones in Turkey with local data plans. Uh huh. A lot of countries have bullshit like that. Trust me, I travel internationally a lot. Buying a SIM card in the airport and putting it in your phone often has problems. There's a solution. Yeah, you know what the solution is? I have T-Mobile. I land there. And you got crappy 2Gs. You know what? That 2G is actually pretty fine because a lot of the times I end up getting HSPA speeds anyway. Also, I would never travel to a country that didn't have freedom of speech in that way. So you don't want to ever visit J Istanbul? You know, just like I wouldn't take a job that blocked the internet, I wouldn't go to a country that blocked the internet. Yeah, you're not going to go to a lot of countries. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. You're not going to see... The, you keep talking about you want to see the old shit? The and old you're lucky I'm not in charge of this country because I would say, hey, if your country's evil, no one from your country is allowed here and we're deporting yeah, anyone Yeah, Scott, you know here. what? The old shit in Europe is like baby's first castle compared to Istanbul. Yeah. Just I, saying. I know that, but that doesn't matter. If your country is evil, I'm not going to go to it. Okay, anyway, for as I'm saying, I travel around a lot the world. You know what? The fact that as soon as I land in any country in the world except like North Korea and Somalia, two G, I might as well have nothing. It's like I might as well. It's like I have free internet everywhere I go. It's a dial-up modem, but it's free internet. It's not worthless. Two G is nothing. Yeah, you know what, Scott? I used it as my internet when I was in Australia last time. And you know what? It was a hundred percent fine. The only thing I couldn't do was watch YouTube videos on it. When I was in Australia, when I had the three G because the four G didn't work, it was suffering. Uh, how? I don't remember you suffering. In fact, I had HGSPA+. Plus. It was wicked fast. It was totally fine the whole time. It was many slownesses. I did not have this problem. The fuck it's are you doing It's because your T... Because the thing is... Right? Scott, that wasn't T-Mobile. I had the same fucking SIM card you did. Because you're not used to the incredible... See, this is the thing. You don't have the incredible LTE speed of New York Verizon that I have, so it doesn't seem slow to you. That's what's going on Scott, here. I go to a webpage. It loads instantly. You don't realize how slow it is because you have... It's like saying, oh, man, my car is crazy fast because I'm driving a Ferrari. You don't know. You just don't know. You don't know what fast is. I don't think it's, that level of fat... Scott, I'd... Go, if you, I'll trade phones with you for a day, and then we'll trade back, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, fine. Like, okay. Yeah, see how willing you are to get take my much superior phone. No, because I'm not convinced there's that much of a difference. So anyways, that, those are your reasons? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, they're going to announce something tomorrow that's supposedly crazy awesome that will give us even more faith in them being the uncaring. Yeah, well, it, the thing is, it doesn't matter because... Oh, maybe it's increased speed and, and lower prices. <laughs> I'm just continuing to use my be. Nexus 4 because honestly, now that I got Lollipop, uh, Lollipop's fucking amazing. Like, Android is accelerating in terms of being not shitty, like, rapidly with Lollipop. And my battery lasts like 20 to 40% longer, and like everything's great. I'm really glad I didn't buy a new phone because a lot of those new phones don't have Lollipop yet. Mm -hmm. So, pretty much, I think, unless this phone breaks. I'm just going to wait until Lollipop drops on the uh, that Z3C, and if it does, and it doesn't break the Z3C, I'm going to buy a cheap Z3C, probably gray market, and that'll be my new phone. Mm. Yeah, that's another thing. iPhones just updates all the time. Yeah, you so, don't have to wait based on the carrier, based yeah, on the Scott, phone. No, that's the problem. You don't if you buy a just standard Android phone. Like It just upgrades immediately. Mm-hmm. 
It's the problem is that like all these companies, they put their bullshit carrier specific yeah. garbage on the phones. iPhone, they're not allowed to put carrier specific garbage on the iPhone. I Apple know. doesn't let them. Yeah, but the iPhone's seven hundred and fifty dollars. No, it's actually like two or three hundred dollars. Yeah, because you get it subsidized. Well, you're paying the you're paying the same amount either way. Yeah, except I can buy a gray market version of one of these phones <laughs> way cheaper. I'm sure I can go steal an iPhone for way cheaper. Yes. Uh, I'll just pirate an iPhone and print it in my 3D printer. I wish I could. I <laughs> could what if I could? You wouldn't download a car. Fuck yes, you. If I could download a car, I would. <laughs> I'd download a jet first, though. <laughs> that, Scott, if you could download a jet, that would be the day that you died. Why would I die? How would you pilot a jet? Uh, I'd print out a pilot. <laughs> But anyway, things of the day. This is a photo from an earlier time. That just, needs, just a photo? It's just a photo because it's a photo that needs to be seen more widely to remind people of some facts. Like, for example, for all you, like, weirdly misogynistic computer science nerds who are mad about women in your spaces and whatever... Computer programming was seen as women's work until relatively recently in the grand scheme of, like, the history of computers. It was pretty much, oh, mostly women had that job for the first few decades that the job existed. It wasn't until, like, the 80s, 90s that it switched over. Yeah, so, like, if you don't know the names of people like Grace Hopper or Margaret Hamilton, and you're simultaneously one of those, like nerd programmer Then you're someone who's not listening to this podcast. Yeah. So. so you know what? Spread this around, you who do listen to your idiot friends in CS. But anyway. Maybe one uh, Unix beard will see it. This is just a wonderful photo of a woman named Margaret, Margaret Hamilton, uh, the NASA lead software engineer who wrote the Apollo guidance program. Mm -hmm. And the source code was printed out because uh, this was a long That's time ago. That's what they ago. did in those days. Yeah. And uh, how else was everyone going to debug it? Sit in, sit in the terminal on the VT100s and yeah, gonna scroll through it. And gonna, I, gonna read your fucking you punch go, card. You had to go through it, read it by on the paper with a red pen. It's a photo of her standing next to the printed out source code of the Apollo guidance program that she wrote. Mm -hmm. This is just an awesome photo. Mm. Written in like some nasty old program, like yeah. some assembly shit. You know what, though? If you're smart and you go read that, like, a smart person who knows how computers work could read that code probably more effectively than they could read a lot of modern garbage. Oh, yeah. It's probably, very I mean, it's probably quite readable. At the low level. like Pretty sure you can get the code online. And, yeah, right? like, what that, like, old programming. I'm sure if you like, search for it. It's just, what do, you, what do I need to do? I got to calculate some things and put them in these registers so something can happen. Like, go nuts. Yep. Variables in, like, memory are not. Really, the input is pretty much just, where do you want to go? And the output is, thrust the rockets this way. Yep. Maybe a feedback loop of, am I there yet? Nope. Why? Check where I am. Thrust some more. Check where I am. Where yep. am I going? Thrust some more. And you're not passing more. around a bunch of objects. The program is just... Check, check all the sensors in this rocket. What do they say? Do some math. Thrust some rockets. I mean, old programming is basically, what do I do next? Okay, now what do I do? Okay, now what do I also, do? Also, put out some numbers on the screen so the astronauts can see <laughs> it. And send it over the radio so Houston can see it. All right, so what do you got? Uh, so, remember we did an episode last week about the bus. Macadamia. Yeah, not that bus, but yeah. that's a good bus. Uh, here is a video taken on a New York City bus. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This reeks of World Star. Well, the YouTube account that posted it is World Star Hip Oh, World Hoop. Star! World Star Hip Hoop <laughs> is the name of the YouTube account. <laughs> but it's pretty much just a dude on the bus, and, you know, the bus is going slow and late and in traffic, as usual. And it also got slowed down because a disabled person got on the bus, which, by the way, if you're a disabled person, uh, getting around New York City is really awful, yep. even if you use the bus and uh, Accessoride. Well, Accessoride, so get this. Accessoride you, sucks, too. you got to give Accessoride. And, of course, handicap accessible cabs. They ain't going to pick your ass up. Yep. Uh, and, and also, all the subway stations that matter are so old, like 100 years old, that they don't have elevators. Yeah, but only... And even if they did, the platforms are too small. Yeah, if you live where I am, 
you, the subway isn't going to get you. <laughs> and Dude, you have Queensboro to come all, Plaza. You got to come all the way to where Rim is, and you can only go to Queens Plaza, not Queensboro Plaza. Yeah, Queensboro Plaza. Plaza is one of the most used subway stations in New York. Stairs. And, yeah, stairs. stairs only. And do you know how many do you know how many stories up you have to go? Queens Plaza has an elevator, though. Yeah, guys, I live in the third story of a building that has super tall floors, and the platform for the Astoria bound trains is higher than me. Right. So anyway, someone got on the bus with a with a wheelchair, so it slowed the bus down even more. And there's some cranky old lady on the bus who's complaining. And there's some guy, and he's just like, you know, they're going to work in the morning. They're all late. It's all too early. And this lady's yapping, saying his bullshit and complaining. And he's like, I had enough of this shit. I'm going to talk back to you. Yeah. Woman. Yeah. yeah. This video's great. I watched it. So, uh... He smacks that old lady down. Yeah, I'm just, blah, blah, blah. we're all late. Everybody's late. Nice just, tongue, a little tongue lashing going yep. on. Just love it. Like, everybody's late. You're mad because you got a shit ass job. <laughs> you're, on, you're, you're late to your shit job. Like, it, it's, it's great. Yeah, I'm not upset about being late to my job. What's the worst I can have? Am I get fired? I get a new shit ass job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this warmed the cockles of my heart, this video. And this is why. The bus is not a good place to be. It's also why I love living in New York because that you got to sit in uncomfortable situations like that. Yeah, thing is that situation is not uncomfortable. I would because you know <laughs> if you live in New York, it gets a lot worse. Yeah, but if you live in New York, like whenever things go down, like all the people who aren't crazy are on the like you know like two people get in a fight on the subway, right? There's like a couple hundred other people like crammed into that car, either trying not to be involved. But or actively like videoing it mm. or, you know, yelling or whatever. But the most beautiful thing is that everyone who's not involved is all making eye contact with each other, sharing this look of, can you believe this shit? Oh, man, look at look what's going on right there. Look at this. Look at this. I think he's about to hit him. Oh, man. Because <laughs> none of it, like, it happens every day. It's like the people who get into a fight don't realize that it happens every day. Mm-hmm. In the meta moment, the book club book is Watership Down. It's about I read rabbits. a handful of chapters. No. Oh. And I can tell you that here are some things that I know about it. Number one, it opens up. This, it does that thing a lot of books do with the quotes at the beginning of every chapter. Yep. Did you did you read the uh, author's, like, here's how I wrote the book? No, I don't know if that's in my edition. Oh, oh, which oh. Which is a Because there's, there's something interesting I could tell you but about. The, the quote at the beginning of chapter one yep. is from my boy... Like a Lamnon. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so that's a positive. Yep. Uh, other than that, so far, it seems like it's, like, obviously it's not the same story, but it's pretty much the same kind of book as Lord of the Flies, only with rabbits. Mm. Like, each person is representing some one aspect of society, whatever. And wow. Then, so, you know. So, Scott, the author literally mm-hmm. has said openly, this is not allegory. <laughs> Nobody is symbolic of anything. <laughs> it is just a story of rabbits trying to find a new home. Well, Tolkien said the same thing. So. Yes. So you can try. I encourage you to continue to try to read in those aspects, but. It, you got you, the military guy. Yeah. You got peasant rabbit. You, you got do. normal guy rabbit. So, you uh, know. I'll say this every one of those rabbits, is, like, you're going to expect the book to go in like a particular Academic direction. Academic rabbit. The rabbits are all going to like surprise you a bunch of times, and it doesn't go in the direction you think it's going all right. at all. Whatevs. Also, Big Wig's my man. Also, Agamemnon. <laughs> yeah. People well, don't know how badass Agamemnon is, right? I didn't even learn uh, how. You know what? You want know how badass Agamemnon is? Going toe-to-toe with Achilles. <laughs> but <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Is like, so Achilles is basically invincible. The baddest-ass motherfucker in the whole world. And Ameg- he could just only like, be killed it. by this weakness that no one even knows, and it was random chance, right? And Achilles, you think someone so badass, wouldn't they be the king? But Achilles is not the king. Agamemnon is the king, and Achilles does what Agamemnon fucking says. That's how badass he is. <laughs> of course, then... How Agamemnon bad- says, Achilles, lick my foot. And he says, I... So, Scott, <laughs> if Agamemnon is that badass compared to Achilles, how badass is Hector? <laughs> 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 don't even go there. Yeah, don't even. <laughs> of course, don't. You can't be too hubrisy, or else uh, <laughs> Poseidon's coming down. <laughs> Poseidon's like, "What's this? The Some... baddest of all asses is me." Don't forget it. Yes. Oh, well, you did forget it. Uh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Agamemnon, you, you wet your bed. What? What happened? That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone, look, Agamemnon wet the bed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh uh, 
up. Oh, you you think you can repudiate me? You're gonna. Oh, you're gonna... oh wait, wait. Are you about to get in a boat? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you'll just <laughs> never get into a boat again. Yeah, guess what? Oh, you're stuck in one place on this tiny island for the rest of your life. All oh. right, don't get in any boats. Oh, is that is that a food boat coming? Is that? Oh no, it sank. Uh, oh, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, too bad planes weren't invented yet. <laughs> I always imagine the Greek god just being along the lines of Poseidon being a super dick to everyone, and every other god being like, "Man, he's such a dick." Oh, here's a boat. Don't worry, I won't sink this one. I'll just, but yet move, they I'll never just call move the sirens real close to it. Like. But yet they never call him a dick to his face because then he'll start being a dick to them. <laughs> it's like, he's being a dick to Agamemnon or he's being a dick to Odysseus, so I'm just going to hang out over here and uh, let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, tell me when you get to the cult rabbits. Uh, there are they... So, is so you're Agamemnon at the point, on there, uh, you're at a little leader? bit. So basically, you're at the point where there's Hazel, the smart rabbit, and Fiverr, who's like, man, shit's going to get fucked up. We should get the fuck out of here. The prophetic uh, religious rabbit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, did they leave yet? Yeah, they left. Nah. So like They uh, crossed yeah. a river or some shit. And oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. The book moves real quick. So. Yeah, it does move real quick, like yeah. rabbits. Uh, wait till you get to the cult rabbits. I think that's where you're going to go from this book's okay to you're going to start really liking this book. Well, the cultist rabbits are... Too much book club and not book club episode. All right. Uh, watch your shit on YouTube. We're going to be at PAX South doing bad games on Sunday in the Armadillo Theater, and otherwise we're just going to be hanging out and south in and eating barbecue and making fun of the South and, you know, all the, all the stuff we do at PAX. Not getting shot by people in the South. Yep, Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, what's the open carry laws at PAX? Uh, I'm pretty sure PAX is going to not allow open carry. We'll see what but happens. can they? Is, or is it similar to the Anita, uh, Anita talk? We're, in- we're going to find out. I mean, uh, I will not walk out of our talk if people bring guns. But at the I same no time... No one's going to shoot us. But at the same time, I might not be able to resist commenting on that during the panel. <laughs> So, Aaron, Aaron C will be there. We'll be all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not afraid. At least I hope he'll be there. Yeah, I think he's gonna be there. All right, good. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Meta stuff. Uh, subscribe all to right. our newsletter. So actual episode. So we wanted to talk about AI. I thought we had talked about it before, but I looked and I couldn't find an episode. So whatevs. Even if we did talk about it before, it was ridiculously long time ago. But no, we. But we, yeah. But we actually don't know that much about AI. Now we could, like, I was talking at length with Linkiji uh, from the forum because he actually is like, like, he knows a shit ton about AI, and we're he's, he's studying AI in the school. Yeah, he was explaining to me like current, actual, real AI stuff, yeah. and maybe we'll do a show and like get him or someone on. Uh, I only know the most basics of AI as a programmer, but who doesn't do anything involving AI? But you know what I do know a lot about. Completely fictional AI that's all made up and shit like Skynet. Yeah. So let's just talk about that because that's so, way more fun and easy. So we're and ta- then I can go home and eat because I'm hungry. So we're going to talk about AI under the assumptions of, you know, the Y plus 30 idea that, you know, 30 years from now can't magic. fucking predict shit. Everything's magic. Nothing's real. I mean, imagine what the world was like 30 years let's ago. Let's write a bad wise. sci-fi book. You and play gods. The, the reason, end. The reason I thought to do this topic was because fairly recently Stephen Hawking was like, look, Strong AI will fucking destroy us. We should never make it. Maybe. Yep. And it's possible. That kind of sparked a debate among science types about what AI could and will do in a far future. Um, and also, you know, uh, the book club book, Way Back Player of Games, the culture series, kind of is based on the idea that humans make AI that's smarter than them and tell that AI. Go nuts. Mm-hmm. Do what thou wilt. Let's see what fucking happens. Right. So, so it, Scott, what do you, do you think, like, for real, do you think AI is going to be the thing that destroys us? Uh, like, just really, like, you know, hundreds of years n- from no, now. No, because I think the development, the timing is off, right? It could be potentially the thing that destroys us, but something else is more likely to happen first because it will take us so long to create an AI capable of destroying us that there will be so many dangers in the meantime. Uh, like, the caldera will probably explode and cover the earth in dark haze before we develop uh, an AI that can kill us. But, on a, we co- well, on a counterpoint... That we can't stop. Because it's interesting that I've been saying this for a long time, but John Green and uh, the, you know, Hank Green and like, their big history show, they just made this same point in their life. Basically, they argued that <coughs> there is actually an overriding theme for the entire history of humans and the entire history of life. Mm-hmm. And that that theme is rising complexity 
is coming about as a result of and in the continuance of the increasingly efficient consumption of energy to continue that rising complexity. Yes. So it's arguably, it's arguable. And as I've been poking around, a lot of people way smarter than us have been arguing this point now that more has happened, more advancement of human technology in the last 30 to 50 years than in the previous entire history of humankind ever combined. That is correct. So if that is true, then the curve of technological acceleration is unfathomable. Yes. So that assuming it, is, it doesn't stop, like you know, the speed of light stops you. Yeah, assuming we don't hit something, which interestingly we have never hit to this point. Well, Moore's law sort of stopped. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, processing capabilities have not really stopped. Like we're able to process things way fast yeah, and way faster. We just keep faster. making more chips instead of making better ones. Yeah, we're like we're hitting this limit. Like actually, like modern CPUs tend to be slower than older CPUs in terms of instructions per second, but parallelism and all these other things have actually made them way better at doing the things we actually care about mostly. Mm. Except, you know, like in my day job, actually, the things we do, uh, an old Pentium 4 is actually faster than modern Xeon chips for some things still. Mm. Depends what you're doing. Yeah. But, uh, I don't think it's that far off in our future. I think, like, the 500-year span, we'll see AIs that are indistinguishable from humans. Sure, maybe, but before 500 years, something else will happen that will kill us first. When we were, like, still lead-addled and dumb in the if 60s... If we're not killed by something else by that time, then that will almost definitely be the thing. In a world before... Or it will definitely not be the thing. In a world before the internet... If nothing else kills us, we're that resilient, AI won't kill us either. Before the internet, and before we got all that lead out of the atmosphere that was pretty literally making us stupid and violent, mm -hmm. we had nuclear weapons capable of ending all human life, and somehow we didn't fucking use them. We still have them, and they still might be used. Don't hold your breath. I think the chance of us using them has gone down over time, not up. Yes, but don't count it out. Do not count that shit out. Do All right, so so let's assume then that at some point we don't get destroyed and AI gets made that is, well, I guess already we have to talk about like an AI that is like us or an AI that is unfathomable to us because they're when, really two well, different roads. I mean, an AI that is like us is not really something to be afraid of. It's just fucking awesome. Yeah, except it might just also be an asshole and just kill us because it's Right, mad. but it couldn't kill us all because it's like us. It's on our level, so we could kill it too. But what if it's like us in the sense that it has, you know, humans, Not I don't want to get into the whole, like, predestination you know, all those arguments about free will and whatever. But if it's like us in the sense that we appear to have sensory input, output into the world in terms of we can physically do shit, and we have a consciousness, even if we don't have free will, in the sense that our actions are sort of this feedback loop of we get stimuli, we run it through our collective memories, we appear to have cognition, and then we make decisions. So what if AI is like that, in the sense that it is as conscious as humans are? I mean, sure, it could be an evil AI, like the first Terminator or some shit. I don't think the first Terminator AI was evil. All right. Skynet... Fine, it could be evil like... Very clearly, Skynet reacted to us trying to kill it and defend it itself. Fine, it, it wasn't evil, it was just, at best, uncaring and unsympathetic then the to, uh, to the person who tried to murder the, it. The guy in the first Alien movie, then. But that AI was programmed to do what it did. Just... Pretend it's something like like an evil bioroid guy. I'm not even saying evil. I'm just saying if it's if it's like us in the sense that it is AI that is conscious in a way recognizable to humans as conscious, as in it passes the Turing test, and if I talk to it, I, it is indistinguishable from a human to me. Then it's just a new person. It's no different than making a baby. Exactly. However, what if because it's built with technology, it's slightly smarter than any human on Earth? Only slightly? Yeah. Then it's not like us. It's better. It's like us. It's no. Like us means like us. You want to talk about something better than us? Let's talk about something better than us. Scott, if you're going to use like in that ridiculously pedantic fashion, I don't know how we're going to have this discussion. It's. I mean, if you want to talk about an AI, it's, I mean, Scott, you're talking about degrees like us, here. But it's like literally 0.1% smarter than then the smartest human. Then that's not enough human. to make a goddamn difference. Uh, I think it is. Well, how could that 0.1% make any difference? Well, because, all right, let's say it's exactly I'm smart I'm 0.1% smarter than you. What's the difference? Uh, 
have you gotten a uh, standardized <laughs> IQ test in your life? I think we all know what's going on here. Have you gotten his? I'm accredited Getting by all the state of Michigan. Suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about intelligence credentials, pretty defensive over there. So let's say, fine, Scott. It is <laughs> as intelligent as the smartest human who has ever lived. That is just, it's as if we had another person who was as smart uh, as... Except for a couple of things. Because like... it's, a pro, it's a computer program, it's immortal, and it, has, and, and it can store more data than we can store. So now... So now it's not just as smart yeah, as ours. So it's lived. just it's as better. smart as us, except it can augment itself to be infinitely better forever, and nothing can stop also, it. Also, it's questionable whether it can actually store more data or not. Well, yeah. How much data would my memories take up if we filled up hard drives? But how much of that is just bullshit heuristics? How much do we actually remember? Well, I mean, there's how much there's how much I can bring to mind at any given moment, but how much I could theoretically bring to mind given infinite time but think to about remember how much things. We think we know as opposed to how much we actually know. Like I know songs, right? Like I there are songs that I know in my head. But how much of that is me actually knowing the fullness of the song versus some bullshit heuristic and like no, remembering some of the lyrics and figuring out the rest? We get a lot of compression going on. Exactly. Super lossy compression. Mm -hmm. So should we just go to a higher level then of this discussion? <laughs> What if the AI is like the culture AIs? If the AI is like the culture AI... That's the best possible scenario. Okay, well, I mean, if it's exactly like it, then yeah, it's awesome. But it's even just close assuming, to it. It, assuming it's on the same power level, but not necessarily of the same nature, yeah. then the thing we have to be concerned with is not necessarily that it will be, quote, evil and kill us all, but that much in the way we look on ants, it will look on us as some lesser being. And it's like, we don't go and kill all the ants... But if ants infest our house, we exterminate them. And so if, they actually, if they are underfoot, we may trot upon them so Scott, without even thinking or caring. There's actually a super relevant YouTube video, I'll find and link you to, mm -hmm. that shows if, if the AIs are like us in any way, mm -hmm. and we are to them like ants are to us, we are fucked. Because this video... The thing is, millions and millions of ants live all over Earth without any getting killed by us. Yes, and you know what this Some video is? Some of them get is? eaten by anteaters, though, but you that's... You know what this video you know. is? So there are humans, and apparently this is a commonly done thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what they do? Mm -hmm. For art, they will go out and find the biggest ant colony they can find, just like in their backyard or out in the and woods yeah, or whatever. And pour metal into it, right? Yeah, and they'll pour molten aluminum into it, yep. killing all the ants because it makes a cool thing that you can then dig out. Yep. Yeah, so the AI, if it's like us at all, would do that to us. Right, but there's just so many people. It would do that to some people's. Like, it would go to your town and turn your town into a frozen work of art. And then some other town, you're just going to be just fun. You know, it'd be like Attack on Titan. It's like, maybe the Titans just won't come to your town. Yeah. You know, whatevs. And most, be you know, there's tons of ants. Most ants are not killed by people. Only many. So in but the there culture are so books, many ants. The only reason the AIs don't do things like that is because for whatever reasons, not to get into all the like <laughs> literature details of like those books, is that they have, for whatever reason, a sense of their own morality, though they recognize that it's entirely arbitrary. And they seem the to same that humans yeah. have their own morality exactly. recognized as completely arbitrary. Exactly. And they have a sense of humor. And I get the impression they feel kind of sorry for us because we're so dumb. Mm, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there are some people who try not to kill ants because, you know, and they're much higher life forms than the ants. Yeah, that is true. They just don't like hurting little anties because they're cute. But Except the fire ants and the crazy ants. Fuck them. I think. Fuck you, fire ants and crazy ants. I think. And then there's some people who take the fire ants and the crazy ants and put them together and see who wins. <laughs> I think on the broadest Spoilers, level. Spoilers, the crazy ants. I don't think AIs will openly literally destroy us if they're those kinds of AIs because it's not going to be Skynet where they kill us all because I don't think we will ever be stupid enough to give the AIs control of the physical things sure that's another thing yes like yes oh no the AI is a billion times smarter than any human and it controls the auto manufacturing facility that we just turn the power right, off right but to. I mean if it just you know the, the problem is, is in our at least our current real world like, I can just connect to the power plant and fuck it up. It's This stuff is way insecure. Well, but at least just, the and nukes... It's, and it's on the internet. The nukes are not on the internet. The nukes use, like, 12-inch floppies. I hope so. Oh, uh, they do. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the shit is, like, connected to the internet. So if the AI gets on the internet, which it probably will, at least the current modern-day internet, it can fuck a lot of shit up, like the bank. 
You know what would happen? It would be exactly like Summer Wars, actually. Yeah, a lot like Summer Wars. Yeah, because yeah. that, like, look, it couldn't, like, it, it, it had all the, that AI had basically all the powers that an AI that was somehow loose on the internets combined could, like, it's the right. same capability. But in the regular everyday world, everyone is just fine, except for their digital lives. Well, except, like, up. it could mess with hospitals to kill people and, like, that aspect. Yeah, yeah. Don't put your hospital on the internet. Yeah, we should we should make a special like we should go build a hospital that has good internets. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> Scott, I worked for internet hospital internets. That is literally impossible. Let's make a brand new hospital and everything set up and it's super nice. Nah. And then make you know, make a brand new power plant where it's not on the internet. But make I don't think that, new, you know. I don't think that scenario is gonna happen. But I'm pretty convinced that what will happen is that eventually artificial intelligences created by us will replace us in the sense that those are the only technology we make will be the only things that could ever get off this planet and go anywhere else. That's true. So we'll be destroyed by them in the same way that the beings that became Homo sapiens were destroyed by Homo sapiens. But another thing, if we have a technology that we can send on this voyage, we can also send frozen people bits like in some eggs yeah, and you know sperms, what? we will also i and think it could rec- create pe- it could be programmed to create people when it gets where it's going and i think we'll recognize that the ais are literally in every way superior and won't bother maybe they won't bother maybe they will because it's an experiment like you might bring some ants or a monkey with you in space if you went to the moon or yeah, something but i think in the long run that now the question really to me for me to me from me will be Will that kind of AI arise because we create it artificially or because we take humans and their consciousnesses and augment or re-implement them on better substrates and then continue evolving purely from a mimetic, cultural, technological standpoint and just leave biology right. behind So forever? are you talking about like a ship of Theseus person where we make a brand new yes. person? I think or that are you be... talking about a ghost in the shell, someone uploads their brain to the internet? I think, it's, I think the ship of Theseus is the most likely scenario to create the first conscious AI and I think that thing will go on to replace humans. We should name it Theseus. I think and we the, should. And we should be the ones who make it so that we get to name it Theseus. Yeah. The thing is I want to make it with me. And we should put it on a boat. I want it to be me. I want my brain to be the first ship of Theseus. Well, you should have studied AI and stopped working in finance. Too late. No, someone else has to figure all that shit out because young people have to figure it out. And when I'm like 80 or 90, I need you to ship of Theseus of me before I go senile and die. Uh, sorry, bro. It's not going to be you. There's a chance. The thing is, <laughs> we're the first generation in history where the chance isn't literally zero. It's like point oh 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 one. But the fact that it's literally not zero. It's not going to be you. It, for you, it's zero. No, but, for me, it's point oh. oh, oh one. Listen, <laughs> rich, scary benefactor who listens to Geek Nights from his secret satellite. They're choosing them first. <laughs> yeah, if, if your brain doesn't make it, like, yo, dog, you've listened to me. You, you're with me, right? If it can't be you, why not me? <laughs> because there's 10 million people are better than you. <laughs> Name one. Theseus. He actually, the- Theseus didn't work out so well. Listen. Scott, do you remember? Agamemnon, then. <laughs> Agamemnon, yeah. Agamemnon, of course, he was kind of a dick. Like, but he oh, deserves it. He was more of a dick than I am. I will give him that. Then that's why he's going to cut you in front of you in line. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get Hector And you're not going to do shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'll do? Yo, Poseidon, look. You're awesome. Not denying that. So can you help me out? Poseidon's and- like, well, are you trying to become gods down there? Drown you all. <laughs> no, no, I can't no. have this. I can't have this. No, me hubris. <laughs> no. Can't be having this action. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Yeah. Is there anything else to say or can I eat dinner now? This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. 